Hi, I'm Bill Mosley, and you're in the horror basement. <laughs> Lick my plate, you dog bitch. Welcome to the Horror Basement Podcast, coming to you live from the TN Horror News Studios in the basement of my mom's trailer. I am one of your hosts, Johnny Leroy, and as always, we have our local horror experts here with us, Jim Jam. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Yeti. Hey, hey, hey. All right, guys, so uh, on today's podcast, we have uh, Horror News and uh, Killer Dolls. And that ties in with the movie of the week, Child's Play. And speaking of Child's Play, have y'all heard about the new uh, Michael Jackson documentary? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude. I told you I had a doozy for you. Oh, I told you I had a doozy. God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> well, hey, how about the... I'm going to piggyback off that a little bit. There's an R. Kelly thing on oh, Lifetime yeah. also, speaking of... Speaking of child's play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, well, I, was, I couldn't pass it up. My microphone's working. Yeah, I think. Fucking... He had the interview? You see him? Did you see the interview with him after the thing came out? Oh, yeah, he went... Well, he was... He's pissed off. He went nuts on that shit. Uh, yeah. He's like, you messing with my There's life, almost- my kids. Yeah, I mean, this, this motherfucker's talking about. I gave y'all thirty years. Yeah, you about to get them years back, dog. Don't even trip. <laughs> well, I don't know. I couldn't help myself on that. That's sake. pretty. That was that was <laughs> damn good. It's just like toss play. Hmm. Huh? Hee <laughs> hee. <laughs> yeah. Hee <Yeah. laughs> hee. There you go. You know, you know I, I think but, this uh, is a good place to bring it up while I'm remembering it. Watched it this morning, and uh, Chucky tells that old boy. He says, "I gotta go." I've got a date with a six-year-old boy, and I'm like, "Wow, I'm gonna need you to have a seat right over here." <laughs> Somebody fucking call Chris Hansen. <laughs> well, the the Michael Michael uh, Jackson documentary, The Simpsons even pulled their episode with the the big dude that was Michael Jackson in the show. Yeah, they pulled them episodes over it. It's like That's everyone funny. already knew yeah. how he was, so I, I heard you're something. drudging that back shit back up. I. I We've known for years that R. Kelly was pissing on little girls <laughs> and Michael Jackson was fucking little boys. Yeah, I mean... We've known this for years. Like, collectively, this has been, like, a, like for 15 years longer. at least. You know what I'm saying? They've been yeah. a fucking joke in society. And just now, in the past couple of weeks, everybody's up in arms about it. Dead. Like, don't get me wrong, pissing on little girls and touching kids is bad. I mean, I'm not fucking defending them by any stretch of the imagination. But just like now, the outrage machine strikes. I mean, really? Yeah. Uh, it's also, he's dead. To me. You know, he can't freaking defend, defend himself. himself. So it's kind of. Eh. Well, R. Kelly's still alive, and he he he's pretty mm-hmm. hot. <laughs> but all right. Well, I wasn't wanting to go into detail with that. I was just trying to be funny. It was hilarious. Though. That was good. <laughs> Speaking of horror news, hey, oh, I guess that is horrific. Yeah. Yeah. But in horror news, uh, I was looking up stuff, but you can find this on, I think you posted a link to it on the website, right? Yeah. World War Z is coming out with a video game. And uh, I don't know if y'all really play video games a lot, but I don't think either of you do. Not too much. But, I do, but like I play on 360 right now, so I don't, like, I'm not involved in anything new. Okay, yeah. What's that? Yeah. I'm joking. <laughs> but, um... I... I, I Tell it from a dinosaur. Oh, okay. So uh, apparently, uh, it's going to be a third-person shooter, cooperative combat against large numbers of zombies. And of course, zombie games everyone loves. So, especially Call of Duty, killing zombie Nazi zombies. Fuck yeah! And I enjoyed World War Z. So, and when you p- first sent this to me, I was like, I thought they canceled World War Z too. I thought <coughs> that was over. And then I realized, oh shit, that's a video game. Same thing Mrs. Jam said. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit, it's a video game. I'm kind of looking forward to it. I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of third-person shooters, too, myself. Yeah, so... Uh, I mean, 
uh, it's supposed to come out April sixteenth. So there you go. Okay. You know, that's I don't that, know if people were exactly excited. a month. From There's now. some people that didn't well, like World War Z, and you know, I enjoyed the movie, but yeah, in the trailer, what platforms is it going to be on? Uh, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Microsoft Windows. Well, that's awesome. We're getting my boy a PS4, quote unquote, for his birthday, and uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to check out that World War Z. About, <laughs> about time you jump on the PlayStation game. Yeah, and the PS4 right? right now they have a well, yeah. I don't know, they have a discount on a PlayStation Plus membership for 45 bucks. Yeah, it's usually 60, so it, it rarely gets that low. I think I purchased mine this year when. Uh, they're in Black Friday, and it was like 45 bucks. I was like, cha-ching! Yeah. Uh, can't pass that shit up. Well, yeah, by the time you hear this, it'll probably be gone, though. <laughs> I think it's through the 26. Oh, well, you, you'll get so, there. So go get your... Uh, I mean, if you're... you know, I just, I just seen that today, so, you know. Ah, uh-huh, news. So, uh, I don't, it'll probably be a $60 game like normal. Oh, right? yeah, it'll be a triple-A. Yeah, it'll be 60 bucks, and then there'll probably be a fucking shit ton of microtransactions because it's like if you pre-order, you get a certain thing, like a loot box that contains stuff. So. Oh, fuck. Yay. Well, yeah, yeah, that's the problem with video games now. Um, the microtransactions and getting a partial video game for 60 bucks. Looking yeah. at you, EA. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that Them and Activision, they're... Kind of ruined video games because Fortnite come out with a free game, and then you know Fortnite was free. You download it free, and then you buy all these microtransactions, which pays for the game. You know what I'm saying? And now it's like, well, we're going to give you a partial game, then so 60 make you fucking dollars, and then make you pay uh, more for the add-ons, and then uh, make you pay more for microtransactions. Here you go. Thank you. Seven hundred million dollars was not enough for us. We need more. How much do you think they make off video games? Like I said, I don't know. I mean, there's a shit ton of people involved in video games. But if you make over $500 million and that's not enough money for you, then there's something wrong. You're not, uh, you're doing something wrong in your business model. You're a greedy You're spending dick. money the you're wrong sp- how. That's for sure. Yeah, you're, you're spending, you, you need to scale back something. You know what I'm yeah, saying? You need to cut down on the fucking cocaine. Yeah, because because if you sell a million units, like a million units of your video game at sixty dollars a pop, I mean, you know, and then plus everything else, and a lot of times they sell more than a million, you know. But oh yeah. Speaking of uh, video games, I don't know if it's still going on, but it's not a horror game. But uh, Amazon Deal of Days was Grand Theft Auto Five for fifteen bucks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and they're in the same boat though with the fucking shark cards and shit. Yeah, it's about impossible. Like for me, like we played it, try to earn money on that bitch. No, it's just me, everybody's trying to kill you. It's too just too many damn kids on there. Yeah, and you know, and that's what uh, I haven't played Red Dead Redemption two online. I've just been playing the story mode. So, but yeah, so that was my news. We don't need to get off totally on video games. So, so yeah, yeah. you're up next. Uh, I'll go. Uh, Annabelle, the third Annabelle movie. Yep. called. Uh, they finally released the title, I think, yesterday or earlier today. Annabelle Comes Home. Uh, Why did he go last? Good. Hell, his has a perfect segue. I don't know. I don't know. Well, anyway, you you volunteered ahead. to go last. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry, Eddie. Go ahead. Uh gonna be i mean we can stop the third, the third annabelle don't. movie like i you know i may be in the minority of like horror like horror fans but like my my shit is like really varied and i really like the the first two conjuring movies annabelle i thought was fucking dope uh creation was eh. so you know i've got kind of got some expectations for the new ones it's uh Gary Doberman wrote the screenplay, uh, and he wrote he wrote on it. He wrote on uh, the other Annabelle movies. He he wrote the screenplay on the Nun. We'll get back to that. Uh, <clears throat> and he's directing it too. Uh, James Wan, the uh, the director of like the Conjuring films and whatnot. He's uh, he's one of the producers on it, and the uh, the the. The Warren family's coming back. 
and Lorraine. So they're they're always fun. Uh, I don't know. I think it, I think it's got some promise to it because, like, for all its faults, I kind of liked the uh, the writing in the nun. Like the story itself was really cool. It just it was just a CGI shit show. You know what I'm saying? I just I I didn't fucking like it. I got I got real polluted and made fun of it the whole time. But uh this looks like it may I mean, I bet it'll be better than the nun. And it comes out uh June twenty eighth. You know, summer that's horror. Me. Yeah, it wasn't much of a damn uh, a build up for it. They no, they've well, they, they've been, this whole universe. They they like continuously work on this shit like a machine. Uh, well, if you have multiple so, directors I mean, working on multiple different movies, then I mean, yeah, kind of like, like this uh, is Gary Dauberman's uh, first. Uh, uh, it's his directorial debut, but I mean, he's a hell of a writer. Oh no, I'm not in the Conjuring universe. I've never watched any movie. Um, I've seen them all, so I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I haven't watched any of them. How does this doll stay alive? It's a possessed doll. It's not an actual living thing. Yeah, the doll is more. Just get rid of it. Yeah, it's uh, it's a demon. It's got a Um, pretty crazy demon attached to it. Oh, you can't pick it up. I guess you can. Well, I mean, uh, you can't just leave it in the house, move. <clears throat> I mean, she'd fuck just asking. Up. No, she'll show back up wherever. Okay, wherever that's you... all I want to know. Like, I don't know the story. She's a clinger. She's like a bad, bad case of herpes. She's always popping up. She's, uh, a, she's a clinger, right? Yeah, for real, like a class five. <laughs> uh, class five. Uh, I did like I, you know, I totally recommend The Conjuring. They're not, you know, the most cerebral or the most gory or the smartest fucking horror movie you'll see. But, like, especially the first one, they're good haunted house movies. It's just like a fucking popcorn movie, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm not... Have I, a I drink, I'm not, kick I'm not back, and... Ghost movies. Huh? I, don't think I'm, I just don't think I'm that big on ghost movies. It's not a ghost. Oh, well, a see, demon. there you go there. Well, demons are ghosts. Well, you went and saw damn what you call it in damn theaters and he's possessed. Yeah, I know that movie sucked. Per- <laughs> Prodigy. It wasn't that great of a movie. About said proposal. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, I went and watched it, and it's like, okay, yeah. I mean, it could have been better. They could have made it. Yeah. You know, it, yeah, you probably could have picked a better movie to go see in theater. My sister wanted to go watch it, and yeah. she, so I was being a nice fucking brother. Uh, is that a problem? Yeah, you should have said not. Nah, I'm not saying fuck that. Yeah, I mean, she wanted to watch it, and it's like, okay, I'll go with you. Screw it. Right. Ten bucks. So something that's better than that movie, old Joe Bob Briggs joins the '80s horror documentary "In Search of Darkness," which is uh, in crowdfunding, and uh, you still have till March 31st to secure your copy of the documentary. And the only way you can pre-order it is through the Indiegogo campaign. But this uh, documentary is basically about 80s horror and everything that goes into it. Uh, how much uh, How much in copy that somebody drawing? This is a British thing, first oh, off. Oh, so you're going to have to convert shit and all it's that? 20, uh, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pounds. Yeah. Great British pounds. I think it's Great Britain, whatever. But... That's probably twenty five ish dollars somewhere. Twenty seven, I think. I mean, I mean, I think that's how. I think they're like, you know what I'm saying. And uh, but that's just for the digital download. Twenty six sixty four exact. Yeah, so twenty seven. I was yeah. pretty damn close, but it's thirty five dollars for the DVD plus extra Brundle Fly. I don't know what the Brundle Fly is. So, uh, and then if you want it on Blu ray only, it's 35 pounds. So, you're looking at like $45. It better be a hell of a DVD. Well, it says. I don't know. Well, it says the documentary is about 
The decades that gave rise to some of the horror genre's greatest icons, performers, directions, and franchises that forever changed the landscape of modern cinema. Say that. I could justify $35 for it. Yeah, it's tracking major theatrical releases, obscure titles, and straight-to-video gems. It's got an incredible array of interviewees that have been assembled for this movie, which Joe Bob is now a part of. You got people like Barbara Crampton from Reanimator and so many more. Don Mancini from Child's Play and Curse of Chucky. Uh, Cassandra Patterson, which is Elvira. Mick Garris. Sean Cunningham. Bill Mosley. Tom Holland. Kane Hodder. Lloyd Kaufman. Nick Castle. And there's a ton more people that's going to be And it's going to be over three hours. So it said to create an extended cut that will push past the three-hour mark. Here's my problem, though. I've had it, and they've raised 135,000, you know, pounds for this movie. But I've backed stuff that's foreign, and that's something that was coming out of the UK, and I couldn't do it. Like my bank, like, and, but this was on Kickstarter, and I couldn't do it on Indiegogo either. But I think the campaign had already been fulfilled. But uh, on Kickstarter, it wouldn't allow the transfer of money, even though I opened up international billing. Does uh, any Google accept accept PayPal? Because no, I think it, PayPal, you can do it. Uh, I don't know how it works like that, but I don't know. But I saw the trailer for this, uh, and then it had Joe Bob on there talking about it, and then uh, it showed a, a picture or a video of him from, uh, I guess, back in Monster Vision days. Ah, he was, he just looked like a little teenager back in. I know, right? You know, if it, I'm probably just going to have to wait because like Johnny said, it's probably pretty difficult to them have to convert your money and shit like that. What ain't difficult, it's just like we bank at the same place, so therefore you would have the same issue. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I wonder if you get a prepaid visa or some shit. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, maybe. But it says that it has 40 plus interviews filmed and more than 100 hours of incredible (coughs) material. Yeah. I bet. I bet. I stand corrected. I, uh, yeah, that's totally worth it. But they're only going to release three hours of material, so I'm. I almost bet you a shutter will pick it up when it comes out. After probably a while, there, but I don't know. You never know, though. It just seems like it'd be hard to cover all the '80s in three hours. You they're probably I mean? just going to hit the high points. Yeah, uh, true. Hey, y'all! Speaking of high points from the '80s, uh, which had. Killer. Brought a awesome killer doll. So we're yeah, there's my weak cast segment. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Uh well I mean a lot of well, some of it comes from the eighties, I guess. I mean I said child's one, play. One of the killer anyways. Puppet Master. Okay, let's let's start it off like this. What was your what killer doll were you afraid of the most as a kid? Did you have one? One, one that stood out to me the most was that little leech lady from Puppet Master. One that spit or uh, yeah, lets them leeches in your mouth or some shit. Oh yeah, that's pr- that's fucking creep me. The shit. Well, here's out. the thing: we're still gonna stay on Puppet Master because to me it was the drill head do- dude off Puppet Master. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I fucking hated Puppet. Scary. Like, Puppet Master to me, like, actually, like, freaked me out as a kid. Back in the day, I mean, it came out in 89, so I was nine years old, so I probably seen it when I was 10 or 11, and I was like, fuck them little puppets. Oh, yeah. I I didn't, it'd be hell if you're like, you know, I guess didn't they tie them them down, and then she got on top of them, and then opened her mouth, and the damn leech, yeah. That was gross. Fuck that Mine was the little slave dolls from Tales from the Hood. That scared you the those most? Fucking, yeah, those things were fucking evil. <laughs> I vaguely remember, I was like remember Tales from the out. Hood. Uh-huh. I think when I watched it, I was 16 or 17. I was probably baked out of my mind. Yeah, no, that's the way you're supposed to watch it, but I watched it when I was like 9 or 10. Oh, okay, yeah. What? Wait. Wait. Yeah, you was born in 86, yeah. I don't know. Came out like 95. Yeah. So, I can see that. 
For me, though, it was Drew Head Dude. I don't know his fucking name. You know, I did not like him. Drew, Drew Head Guy. Yeah, <laughs> Drew Head Dude. But uh, we can go through a list of, uh, of course, Annabelle's on this list, you know. But she's just a demonic doll. Yeah, she would be. Yeah, that's I guess a, that's what most dolls are, though, right? Oh, yeah, no, I, yeah, they're all either, like, possessed by a demon or an angry ghost or something. But speaking of the Annabelle doll, or this does go into a horror comedy, she gets boned by a black guy. What? Yeah, what? Marlon Wayans. Uh, a haunted house. Oh. oh, yeah. He has an affair with Annabelle, <laughs> his old lady. He's like, it shows him banging her in the bed and like, they get wild. Yeah, never seen it. It's pretty fucking funny. I saw it a while back. It was, uh, it was all right, yeah. And, uh, I, I vaguely remember Pinocchio's Revenge from 1996. Is that the one where his nose grew and it killed people? I don't know. I that could have been a comedy. Awesome. That could have been a comedy. I don't know. The boy... Well, if we're going in a chronological order, then I'll shut up. But no, we're not. There's no order. The boy. No, see, see the boy. The boy is a fucking fuck that movie. All right, because it it pulls you in. Was like all the advertisement was like she was a uh, nanny and she was coming in to uh, babysit for this this kid, and she finds out that the the boy she's babysitting is a doll, and she's like, well. Y'all are fucking weird, but you're paying me, so I stick around. And uh, she sticks around, and she's babysitting this fucking doll, and all this weird, spooky shit starts happening. And it's like, oh, the doll's possessed. And it turns out it's some fucking half-retarded guy living in the fucking malls. And it's like, you know, you had me, you know, all this advertising and two acts into the movie thinking I'm getting to see some haunted doll action, because I, you know, I dig shit like that. Uh... It's possessed, you know, I'm, I'm there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you made me think there's this whole supernatural plot going on. And there's just some fucking, some jag off in the fucking wall. Some jag off. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking jag off. I haven't, heard that. Well, I haven't heard that shit in a long time. <laughs> this is fun. Dead silence. Uh, that face is really familiar. The, um, with the green eyes and shit, but I think that's because of Slappy from Goosebumps. I was about to say. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's one of the OG kids' evil dolls, you know, as far as not being rated R, you know. Yeah. And plus, he was a big part of the last Goosebumps movie, so. Speaking of that Slappy thing, uh, me and my daughter did a From the Cradle vodcast, which I hadn't even edited yet. We did a little episode on Goosebumps. Second one? First one. One. Yeah, we bought it at a you know the five dollar bin or whatever three dollar bin. Oh yeah, don't so, blame me. Hey, y'all, look for that. I'm eventually gonna put it up. <laughs> oh yeah. But uh, yeah. I haven't seen the second Goosebumps. The first one I really I liked the first one. Didn't so. the second one just it was come fun. out? Yeah, yeah, it was fun. I watched the. Uh, uh, we're getting off track here, but the house with the clock in its walls. Is that a horror movie? Like a kid horror movie? Ish. Okay. Yeah, I mean or a Halloween movie. How about yeah, that? Yeah, I mean there's. Witchcraft, but I really liked that movie. Like I was like, dude, this I wish it was would have continued going. I was like, this movie's cool. I like this. But my, Jack, Black. my wife took our little boy to go see it one day. And they just they sometimes they just go out and have you know little days by themselves or whatever. They went and saw it and they both fucking loved it. Yeah, it's just it's a good movie. It's a fun it's a fun movie where you go in and you know a kids movie and it's just like oh that's fun and they of course. You know, kid jokes, you know, poop jokes or whatever. Yeah. Sometimes that's good, though, man. Yeah, you I don't mind it. And yeah. And watch the kids. Dude, I went and saw Smallfoot in the theaters. She was dope. It was way off topic. But, oh, my God, it was so funny. You know, I mean, it was. Nice. It's pretty crazy. But, but hey, Smallfoot has, is a Yeti. Yes, that's so, why I mean, I thought. He's in the creature genre. You know, it's surprising, though, but a lot of kid movies are really funny movies. Like, yeah. The problem is, is the adult jokes in the kids' movies. It's funny because, you know, they can, most time they can say the stuff like that and get away with it because the kids are just like. I guess it's just <laughs> there for the parents. Yeah. So they probably, yeah. It they, is. I mean, it's like, here's you a joke, you know. It's like. He's looking at each other like, can't believe they said that. 
And then the kid yeah, like, hey. your boat every now and, then. and I'm over there laughing and the people that have actual kids are like, What? But now days uh, kids are like super smart and know what because the fucking internet ruined them. But uh Oh yeah, because you give your phone kids phones at eight years old, you don't think they're looking up porn on it? Yeah. What sex? Pornhub. <laughs> this will show you everything you want to know about it. But uh, that's not true. <laughs> what are you talking about, Johnny? The internet lie. never lies. The cakes are a lie. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So uh, that was, you know, some killer dolls. Uh, if you have any other killer dolls, uh, let us know. Mitch, what's your favorite killer doll out there in the audience? Mention it to us in, you know, on our social media yeah. at TN Horror News. You know? Our... Also, uh, the Horror Basement Podcast, you know. Yeah. We've, we're up to, as this podcast is airing, up to 670 followers. Yeah. So, so you know, when we post this, <clears throat> just mention what your favorite horror dolls are. You know, whatever. Yeah. Or what you think of we your favorite horror, horror doll movie. movie. Like, what's your favorite? Yeah. You know? I want to uh, give a shout out to uh, It's a Horror Podcast. They just started up. Their first episode dropped last week. It's and a uh, they, horror? It's a Horror Podcast. They listen, that's what the name of it is? Yeah, they listen to us. Oh, cool. Sweet. But uh, it's Jerry and Kevin. Cut open and dissect everything horror. So uh, I listen to Congratulations, Jerry and Kevin. Yeah. Well, hell. <clears throat> hell yeah. It's fun. Podcasting yeah. is fun. What's that first episode about? Um... Well, they're kind of doing kind of what like uh, Eli Roth did with the history of horror kind of thing. So they're just picking like topics or genres to discuss. And I guess, Ooh. yeah, it's, it's a really good podcast. You know, they, they're very knowledgeable. And, you know, I talked to uh, Jerry quite a bit. He's a big fan of us. And no, I appreciate you, Jerry. So, yeah. Just want oh, to give yeah. him a shout out. Yeah, yeah. No, go check wrong that, with that out. Go check him out. It's a horror podcast. Yeah, it's a good name. It's a horror podcast. Hell yeah, easy to find. <laughs> it, yeah, simple and to the point. Yeah, hell yeah. We're the horror basement. I don't. I don't we fell into that. <laughs> fell into the basement. Yeah, actually. Speaking of falling. <laughs> That was going to be a horrible segue. <laughs> For the love of horror candle. <laughs> Hell yeah. You can fall into the beautiful smell of the fall. Yeah, a fall. <laughs> the, at at uh, Macabre Melts on Etsy. Go check it out. She's making, she had a flash sale, but she's making bigger candles of 20 bucks. And it will have your whole house smell. Like fall, if you so are this is missing a, fall, once you know it's starting to be summer, and you're like, "Damn, I wish." Kind of feels fall the way the temperature is. So yeah, yeah I mean, a little like, bit. Like, I tell you what, the other day I, I was sawing up, a, um, well, we'll just say I was sawing up some meat. My whole house smelled like blood and viscera. I lit that goddamn that that for the love of horror candle. Whole house smelled just like pumpkin spice. Couldn't even smell the death. It was beautiful. Hell yeah. yeah so, so it could cover up the smell of death. So go check that yeah. out at uh, Macabre Melts and everything else that she has. She has really good products. Get one for your cross bears. <laughs> <laughs> and the Chattanooga Film Festival is... Yeah, so the Chattanooga Film Festival is April 12th and 13th. And uh, our good buddy Isaac Thorne will be down there representing T and Horror News and uh, covering... Chattanooga Film Festival. We yeah, appreciate Joe, you. Joe Bob Briggs will be there, so y'all go check that out. If uh, you can't make it to Nashville with, for the yeah. Death Breed premiere. Yep. And, that, that's why and, we can't and, be there. And uh, the Lloyd Coffin will be there hosting uh, uh, Newcomb High, Volume 1, yeah. Yeah, so definitely come out and meet We're Lloyd We're going to be Kaufman. doing a live podcast with uh, our live interview with uh, Lloyd sometime yeah. during that night. Yeah, we're going to try at least. Will I'll we? tell you what, man. You got, you got Chattanooga with the uh, Chat, Chattanooga Film Festival. You got uh, Nashville with, uh, I mean, you, you got Joe Bob down in Chattanooga. You got Lloyd Kaufman in Nashville. Fucking pick one and go. Uh, yeah, truly. So, yeah, Death Breed premieres at Full Moon Cineplex in Hermitage, Tennessee. You can go get your tickets like 
uh, all of us are already done uh, at fullmooncineplex.com. Get them before they sold out. Yep. Uh, yeah. We're grateful to Ben and Stacy for allowing us to host this. And uh, also, go ahead and get you a copy of Isaac Thorne's new book, The Gordon Place. It comes out April 16th. He's so, already mailing stuff out. It's on Amazon, right? Yeah, I think he's already mailing stuff out. Oh, people that pre really? I thought the outdate was, it might have been this month, shit. Yeah, well, I just seen he had boxes. Good. He had boxes that he was uh, he had posted on social media that he was shipping out some copies. That's like right. good for him. Cool, man. Yeah. I uh, I got one of the uh, early release um, review copies. I'm about three quarters of the way through it. The Gordon Place is fucking good, y'all. Is like, uh, it just a really whole book good. about that same story? Yeah. Or just uh, okay. Yeah, so it's a novel. Yeah. Is it? A, yeah, it's a novel. Be? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I guess you'd call it a novel. Oh, well, I know his last book was, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's not short. It's no, okay. no, no. I'll have a review. Of, as soon as I finish it, I'm going to write a review. It, it'll be, my, my review will be up, and I will have links to buy and pre-order or whatever. Yeah, and I think he has audio books, too, for it. So if you don't like to read and you like to listen, I see one of I looked on his website, it's like two ninety nine For an audio book? Yeah, like it wasn't expensive at all. I was like, what? Oh, shit, I'm going to have to get that because I can listen to that. Yeah, listen to it while you're on the way to work, while you're anywhere. Sorry, okay. we got off, way off subject. Speaking of normal people, <laughs> Child's Play, the movie of the week. <laughs> Johnny is back with these awesome segues. As a kid, everybody wanted the good guy doll, correct? Because he's going to be your best friend. Well, yeah, he probably didn't. He was only two when this movie came out. So I was eight. And um, I, I was really four. Wa- no, I was, yeah, I was four. I really wanted a good guy doll. And I talked to all my stuffed animals. Why so, can't y'all fucking talk? You know, like all my stuffed animals, I talked to them and they had stories. So that's, that's the kind of child I was. I don't know about y'all. I had. Did your stuffed animals talk? I mean, you talked for nope. them, of course, but... I mean, but you know how I when you look friends. at something in the dark for too long, it'll look like it moves or whatever? Oh, God, yes. Okay, well, I had a, a like an ass load of stuffed animals because my, my grandma, she'd go to like uh, yard sales or whatever, yep. and she'd just buy the hell out of stuffed animals and you're sitting down with shit, bags of them like, once animals. or twice a year. One of them was this teddy bear probably about three and a half feet tall and it was uh pink and white huh. and i had it in one of them nets or, or hanging from the wall like where yeah. all my stuffed animals were and shit you know uh because my parents were like sick of them being all over the floor so they put them up on the wall on like skinners and nets and whatnot and that one bear because it was so bright i could see it better than the rest of them and i'd look at it <laughs> and it looked funny. like it would move at night and it scared the shit out of me that's funny i had a uh this is so off topic, but I had a, a bunny that smelled like chocolate. That's awesome. I don't Ooh. like chocolate now. Just uh, saying. I don't uh, much care. Did for that chocolate. bunny ruin the chocolate? I woke up one morning and it was like right there, and I smelled it all night. I guess. But yeah, I had all kinds of stuffed animals. But anyways, I always wanted a uh, what was that? Uh, uh, was that my my buddy? buddy. Yeah, my buddy. Never, of course, I never got it because my parents knew that how stupid was that. I had real friends. So I didn't need a my buddy. You know what I'm saying? Like a my buddies for kids that don't have friends. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, kids. If you had a my buddy, you just probably didn't have many friends. But well, yeah, anyway, so Child's Play Gun Down by Detective Mike Norris. That's uh, Chris Sarandon. Y'all probably know him from a bunch of movies. Dying Murder, Charles oh, yeah. Lee Ray. And he is named after a bunch of different murders. Charles Lee Ray. Just so you know. Yeah. Brad Dorf and uh, uses black magic to put his soul inside a doll named Chucky, which Karen Barkley, Catherine Hicks, then buys for her young son, Andy, Alex Vincent, when Chucky kills Andy's babysitter. The boy something, something, something realizes Chucky is no good. Jim Jam did not put all the mono the, the I didn't I didn't click more when I copy paste. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he did not put that but he realizes that Chucky was no good. Yeah. Uh, he he eventually finds out but it was directed by Tom Holland. The story was by Don Mancini. And um 
You should have put who did the animatronics. Uh, fuck, his name is Kevin. Well, Kevin Doherty. I watched because I just watched it and I watched the behind the scenes uh, Blu-ray stuff. Where's the blu- what's where's where's that at? It had behind the scenes, and then you had to hit up. And I didn't know. I was listening to the audio commentary. That, that's where I heard. That's where I, all I saw was audio commentary. I'm like, fuck, there ain't no other damn shit. Did you you got to hit up. Fuck. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? And if you hit up, there's a special surprise. If you hit up the enough. The menu is pretty cool, though, ain't it? Yeah, but if you hit up, like, enough, like, a he- Chucky's head will pop up, and then you click on it, and he says something. He's like, Chucky's back, bitch. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we're speaking of the seven seven discs, right? Yeah, this seven is, disc Blu-ray collection we got off Amazon for twenty five dollars. And then uh, if you when you click up another one, uh, more and it has to be up, not down. It's up. I don't know why, but the the good guy box toy pops up, and then another thing plays of him like animated, and then you click up another, and there's like three of them. Three, I guess it's kind of hidden, you know, little stuff, but. I was listening to the fucking uh, uh, Catherine Hicks, and she's married to the guy that did that was supervising the puppeteering. Huh. Him and her, and then uh, this she, is an Alex Vincent, the the little boy. But they weren't in the same fucking room together. Like Alex Vincent recorded his commentary, and then then she, her and her husband recorded theirs. But then they just put them together, and I'm just like, this is fucking weird. But I could only listen so to so much. So can you tell of it? Can you tell Oh, yeah, because he's like, I think uh, Alex Vincent will bring up something, and then they'll bring up the same thing. So, it, you know, but which it does coincide, like, they both remember, even though he was six years old, you know. But I could only listen to a little bit of it because you couldn't watch the movie because the audio of the movie wasn't there, hardly. So I didn't know what was really going on, even though I've seen this movie. All right. A bunch of times. So. But we always know. Um, when it comes to the chopping block of horror characters. Chucky is on the bottom of the list. Because I would kick his ass. Oh yeah. I'd fuck Chucky up y'all. That's why I was never scared of him as a kid. Alright. So. Uh, it's my fault. I probably. I'm going to probably butcher his name. Even though I heard it a bunch of times. It's not Doherty. I don't know where I got Kevin Doherty. I think that was like a character off something. Mike Doherty is. Uh, he's the one doing King Kong. Yeah, that's probably, but uh, Kevin Yeager, or Yeager, and he was the one that uh, did the animatronics for Freddy, and he was saying the only reason why he got chose for this movie is one person vouched for him, like yeah. recommended him, and then the the director or whoever come over and was looking at his the Freddy head, and he's like, yeah, all I did was make it move his mouth and some of, like, uh, blink its eyes or something in his eyebrows. Go behind the scenes. And look at the fucking good guy doll that he built. Or that his team built. They made like ten of them, six or seven, but... They're all fully working, animatronic? Well, remote. They, the thing is, is each of them did something different. Like the full one, you know, like... I think they had different facial expressions. But they, but they scaled this doll. If you look through the movie, it changes. Like it's changing into a human. It's it bigger, do not it? But no, it don't get bigger. Uh, the the face changes, even the hairline changes to when it starts when he starts becoming more human. Oh, the hairline yeah. recedes, his eyes change, the doll's eyes change. So he starts the, looking more real, right? He starts looking like the character that played him, oh Brad. Um, Dwarf. Yeah. Oh, well, be damned. Yeah, like, and you you wouldn't notice this as a kid, but like just watching the behind the scenes. Hell, I didn't notice it when I watched it this morning. You really? <laughs> Granted, I wasn't. And I wasn't giving it my full attention, you know. Yeah, it's it's wild because they have photos, and I was going to take a picture of it on my screen. And I wish I would have of the four doll heads set up, and it's the good guy doll, and then his hair sort of changes, and then it really changes his face, his the nose of it changes, and the eyes, and then the hair, and then the last one where he just looks mean, and the hairline's way back. And the odds are fully changed. Like it just like damn. I wish I'd have taken. You know what's funny? Uh, you know we. I don't know if we're gonna break it down or not, but if we do, this is at the end of the movie. It shows Chucky, and you could so tell that it's just like a mask on somebody. At like when I think it's the mom or the cop is getting one of the cops or something, but Chucky is chasing somebody, and it turns and looks, and it's 
pretty much like a, a little person or a kid in a Chucky costume. Well, they um, they used a little person in this movie. They made the set thirty percent bigger to make it, okay. Yeah. Like the couch would be thirty percent bigger. His shoes were thirty percent bigger. The room was thirty percent bigger. Everything in it was thirty percent bigger than normal on that set. So they yeah. even even to do the puppeteering that set they built the floor up four feet because they they would be seen. You know what I'm saying? The people would be seen doing the puppeteer. Yeah. They couldn't hide. It took 12 people to control the fully animatronic pup, Chucky. That, but that's what something I want to uh, touch on. 12 For, fucking people. And animatronics wasn't big in 1988. This shit was all new. Well, no. Well, well I guess you think... Yeah, they probably filmed the beginning of 88, probably end of 87. But yeah, anyways, middle uh, of 87. Just or, the yeah. fact that, you know, late 80s, that motherfucker looked phenomenal yeah and that and it still holds up yeah. uh it was all new and and like he was saying that the word animatronics comes from disneyland comes from disney the the the, the, the robots that they use and they're like well shit we could do that but it's not really something it was something new you couldn't go to the internet and, and or get a book and be like this is how you do it they just had to fucking do it but that kind of goes with like the ninja turtles also their animatronics were their the mouth yeah. and stuff. And I don't know why, you know, if they could do that kind of shit in the 80s, they can the so do it in 2019. Do you imagine, could you imagine an animatronic? The money wouldn't... It, it's probably the money. What do you mean but, it's the money? But uh, They made it in 88. Well, 2019, true. they can make it cheaper. You but think? You I mean, wouldn't I don't... fucking need CGI. But Kevin, he was like 24 years old doing this shit. Heck, he was in the forefront of all this. Think so about he's how... He's the pioneer, pretty much. Well, he, like, I'm sure he learned from someone, but it's just... Tom Zavini's in... in Special effects. He, he was talking about it, oh. uh, about Kevin and the movie. And he's like, yeah, I've seen the, the, the heads. and You see the clear plastic, you know, whatever, the head, and all the wires and, and the silver... Sil Solenoids? Solenoids? Yeah, that are in it. It's just, it's fucking wild. It's crazy, man. They, it's wild how this, like you said, the doll looked when the moving ones. It, it looked really cool. It's like, damn, that would be a badass doll to have. The only problem is, is you need twelve people to control it. Like one dude <laughs> just controlled the mouth, the lips, yeah. and the cheeks. Isn't that crazy? And he had something that it, that was strapped to his head, so when he moved his mouth. The mouth would open, but he had to control the upper lip with joysticks. Isn't that, cra isn't that crazy That's how crazy. they can make it look like he's saying dialogue with a remote control, pretty much? Yeah, and then the one person controlled the eyes, like the blinking and, I guess, the moving. And someone controlled the facial feet. Like, dude, it's just, it, of course, you know, the, the walking and all that shit. I want to say something real quick about, you know, the good guy doll and all that. It's a quick promo. Yeah. But Nightmare Toys, uh, you can get... A, a, an actual life-size Good Guy doll, right? Looks just like in them. The original the, Good yeah. Guy doll. Uh, Nightmare Toys has them. Uh, if you're willing to chunk, uh, throw out $600, you can get you a Good Guy doll in the same packaging at the beginning of the movie. And you can get all the little playset stuff with it. At NightmareToys.com. But I, hey, uh, so for six hundred dollars, is that some bitch actually possessed when you buy it, or no? <laughs> that's the. I think it talks and everything. You know, you think you push a button, dude. And she paid like fifty bucks for it behind the fucking laundry mat or behind her work on the fucking movie. How, so that some bitch had to be really expensive when it first came out, though. Like as a kid, is toy. there somewhere that says how many dolls they had made for this movie, they, like for the displays and that, all that display? They were fake dolls. They were all vacuum formed. Oh. Because they could not afford to make all the dolls like that. So they, they only had like 10 dolls made. Like real. They had like five or six rag dolls. And that's the ones that they carried around. You know like just. Oh that's it. why when you saw the babysitter carried it looks like the damn arm was about well, the to pull arm, her off. The arm ripped. Because she was just carried. She had to go back and forth so much. Like they redid so much that the arm ripped off. And it, and it killed old Kevin. He was talking. He's like I hate that scene. You know, like <laughs> where well, you just, can see the arm. Yeah, he's just like the arm just ripped off. I mean, you could, there's nothing you could do. 
And then they had so many animatronic dolls. And then they had the one that you burned. And and they had to save the one that burnt because you never know if you're going to come back to it. Because the one that they burnt was just a fucking nothing. Like, they didn't talk about it, but that was not the real Chucky doll. Because you've seen the little form of it, how little it was after it burnt. I, I think that's where they kind of fucked up on, but... That's my opinion. I don't know. But by this time, you know, we don't have to get into breaking this movie down because... I mean, you should have already seen yeah, it. We're 80... just talking about the behind the scenes more and that yeah, we can which... kick its ass. But yeah, do you, don't I you have something I'm... to say about that? I would whoop I would whoop his ass. I tell you what, <clears throat> I've wrestled a bear. I fought a fucking kangaroo at a at a petting zoo one time. They threw me out, told me I couldn't come back never. And uh, I, I lived in, in Florida for a couple of years. Wrestled gators every some bitching day. <clears throat> and uh, I tell you what, I would fuck Chucky up. Everybody's like, "Oh, he's tiny and fast." And, he ain't even that fast. And, He's like small and fast, and he's oh he's be, no, wouldn't be hard to get to because while I was living in the jungles of Alaska, I was fighting snow lizards like two times a week, and them motherfuckers are smaller and faster than Chucky. I'd stand on Chucky's back, tear his fucking arms off like a snow lizard, like a snow lizard. <laughs> wow, wow, <laughs> that's the only way you can kill a snow lizard. New species. Stand on his back. You're welcome. Tear his arms off. You're. The ass has been covering it up, guys. The snow lizards are real. Yeah, in the jungles of Alaska. Yeah. No less. The Alaska has jungles. It's all an NASA cover-up. Trust me. Mars skies are blue. Yeah, they are. And the Earth is blue flat. Blue skies on Mars? And the Earth is flat. Oh, and the Earth's round. I wouldn't go that damn far. <laughs> yeah. Never go full retard. I did sit up today and my belly hurts. <laughs> Don't make him mad. But yeah, so I I I enjoyed child's play as a kid. Uh, I I don't really recall the second movie, but I'm gonna recall more the third one where they're at the military camp. Oh, oh that's yes. my favorite. That yeah, is, that was my favorite, just because they're at mil- I guess the military. Did camp. y'all just become my best friends? <laughs> and <laughs> that one's the one that I always really remember. Sure. But you know, like I was telling Johnny, <laughs> this is off the subject of horror completely. But uh, that made me think of that one movie. Uh, Toy Soldiers. Is that what it's called? Where it, the, was it Russian? Yeah, where they invade the, the prep school. Yeah. You remember that? Uh, Yeti? The military leaders or some shit? Yeah. I think it was Toy Soldiers. It just hit me. I really liked that movie. Hey, they had a they had a, a, a drone type thing in there, didn't they? Or, yeah. But yeah, so uh, I enjoy Child's Play. What do y'all think about Child's Play? Yeah, it had Sean Astin in it. Yeah. Very good, and he gets whipped in that motherfucker too. But anyways, yeah, uh, I, I, you know, usually when I watch any movies, I'm like off of doing, you know, Tennessee horror news shit on the phone, or not even focused on the movie. I actually stayed focused this entire movie because it actually had me drawn in, and like Johnny said, it's it actually holds up pretty damn well. Yeah, I think it does. It does. And this the nostalgia factor, the old cars. And also, just to say some more facts. When they shot this, and the scenes where it's snowing, that's Chicago. It was the coldest winter they had in 100 years. Holy With the shit. wind chill, it was negative 60 degrees outside, they said. It does. With the wind. And it's they like were now. freezing. Isn't it doing that now? Yeah, yeah. They were freezing. Like, they would be out there, and like, you know where they're doing, like, the um, in front of the store, where at the very beginning... I mean, they're yeah. outside. It's fuck cold as fuck. Yeah, That's crazy. they're just all over there freezing their ass off. But then when they go inside, it's in an LA studio. So like she said, when uh, <laughs> when she ran up to see her sister had died or whatever, her best friend was it? Her friend, yeah. Oh, but seeing that she had died, well, that was like two months before when she went inside to see how her son was. God damn. So, you know, like she said, you'd have to act like you're, you know, running in place or jump up and down and act like you're out of breath and shivering. You know, like, it's just crazy Like when you get down into it and you hear actors talk. Well, I guess this is pretty good for 88. It made $44.2 million. For Box a horror office. movie. And, yeah. And the whole time, she never really thought this was a horror movie. Oh, uh, Catherine Hicks. She's like, it's more about a movie about a mother and child and a detective. 
because for so oh, long shit. they never seen the doll, and then when they got wow. to L.A., it was like uh, she's like, "Oh, the doll. That's right, <laughs> the doll." You know, because she couldn't believe that there was that people would be making a, a movie adults about a killer doll. You know, I you was know, a doll about, coming to life. You know, like the concepts, just you know, like what? I was about to throw in the second one, but I didn't get to. Um, I actually want to watch it now because I forgot what the second one's even about. Yeah, you see, know? and that's how I am. It's like I almost skipped the second one, but I bet you once I start watching, it's like, oh, okay, I remember it now. And I don't know how I got to watch this fucking movie as a kid. The same way I don't know how I got to watch uh, Toxic Avenger. (laughs) What was that? I had really good parents, but what were they doing? (laughs) Not watching what you were watching. Oh, shit. They probably watched Child's Play with me or something. I mean, it's not really that bad of a movie. Mainly he just cusses. Yeah, I mean, it's not really that bad of a movie. I've watched a lot of rated R action movies. What do you think about when they went from Child's Play name to the Chucky series? Where it's like when uh, Chucky Seed and then uh, Bride of Chucky. Well, see, and that's where they took a turn. and Went to horror comedy, right? Yeah, they went to the comedy aspect of it, so it lost... I really enjoyed those, man. I never watched any of them. Oh, when this... when when and I think it's Bride of Chucky... Uh, they were about to bone, and he asked her, or no, he's about to do the thing, and she asked him, do you got a condom? She's like, bitch, what are you talking about? I'm made of rubber. <laughs> yeah, I never that, watched any of them. Which the the Bride of them. Chucky was okay. The Seed of Chucky was just fucking <laughs> garbage. Don't, but I really like Cult of Chucky and Curse of Chucky. Those are fun watches. I haven't actually watched those well, I mean, now I have the opportunity to watch them all. It's just I never got around to it. And after watching the three, and it's like, you're going to reboot it as Chucky. and Now Chucky you know. is a legit, uh, I guess, animatronic that goes haywire, pretty much. Or someone programmed it or something. Yeah, I'm still not... I, I, I still don't know what the new one's going to be. I, I'll give it a shot. I don't know. I'll go back and forth on it, really. I think, I, you know, part of me thinks, hey, this is a cool idea. Part of me thinks this is fucking lame. It's just... Well, and that's the na- that's the nostalgia aspect of it. I think it's the uh-huh. nostalgia for us. Yeah, it is. The it generation is. that we grew, you know, we grew up, and it's like well, I enjoyed this as a child, and now you're fucking it up. You know, like they're taken yeah. away from it. But then again, though, a new generation is going to get to see it. You know, yeah, in modern yeah. time. That- so therefore, it's kind of like okay, well. And they're probably... That's kind of how I feel about all these remakes of nostalgic franchises, not just in horror either, like, you know, except for Ghostbusters. Um, you know, you've got this, this remake that may be a good movie, may be a good remake, because, you know, you can kind of judge those separately. But uh, it's going to bring interest. Yeah. You know, because, you know, I know when I go into something and I really like it, like, uh, for instance, fucking The Grudge. Like, oh, I like The Grudge. So now Juwan is on my radar, and I want to go see that. I want to go dig into what's before it, you know? So, I, you know, I kind of hope that's what happens with all these nostalgic franchises. And when you bring up The Grudge, uh, I just got to bring this up because Asian horror. Netflix just picked up a, a Taiwanese horror series from uh, that's owned... Taiwan Public Access Channel called Green Green Room, I think is what it's called. Huh. And it's about a, psych, a therapist that's in America, then moves back to Taiwan to start, start his practice there, but weird stuff happens and he realizes where he come from. Or, But uh, the problem I have is, uh, and this is, probably should have brought this up in the news part of it, um, but it says a Netflix original series. When you <laughs> And I'm like, that's not true. See, they do that a lot, and I don't like it. Like they'll take they'll take an existing property and market it and put it in a new market or start to distribute it and call it a Netflix original when it's really not. Yeah, There's just and... the distro behind it. Like um, before I wake uh, is one that I know for sure. It was it was made like a couple of years. It was already finished before Netflix ever picked it up. It's a Mike Flanagan movie. And it's I, so- I mean, I appreciate Netflix bringing the stuff to you know to a mass market though, 
And I guess they paid the person that. to be like, hey, they'll just say that it's a Netflix original, I guess. But it's still on Saturday nights, I think, is what I, the article I read. It plays on, on a weekly Saturday night in Taiwan. Huh. So That's cool as hell. Yeah. I guess, I guess in America it would be a Netflix original. Yeah. I guess that's how they see it. And in other countries, it would be a Netflix original, you know? So, yeah. Because you're Outside never going to get to see it. Yeah. So, But, yeah, sorry. We got off track, of course. Uh, so, but Child's Play, we all enjoyed it. Uh, what do you think about it? Uh, did you did you watch Child's Play as a kid? Was you afraid of Chucky as a kid? Did it make you afraid of dolls as a kid? You know, all that stuff. Let us know. Hit up the social media. Horror Basement Podcast. Uh, Instagram. And uh, you can find it all where. About everywhere you find podcasts. Yeah. Cast box. So, while you're at it, go check out my interview with Dolan Farmer. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the audio is a little wonky, but dude, ah, I tell you guys, if you guys haven't heard it yet, it's, it, it was fucking fun because he's not just been making movies since like the early eight, like the mid to late seventies. Uh, he's been involved in, you know, he he wrote for Fangoria. He had his oh, own sweet. fucking his own magazine called the Splatter Times back in the day. So like he's been like a horror guy since fucking forever, right? And he like he dropped so much Tennessee history on me as far as theaters and like drive ins and grind houses and stuff and, and, and then just a bunch of movie stuff and dude's just really interesting. So you guys should really go check out that interview. Yeah, yet he did that interview and I was like, Well, that sounds like a free interview for the Horror Basin Podcast interview series. <laughs> well, sure. We're not on it. Me and Jim Jam are on it. So I was like, uh, dude. Uh, I'm going to be I'm gonna be real with you. I'm barely on it. Oh, well, like, but I should have gave him a back brace because he carried that whole fucking interview like a champ. He's, he's a talker then. He's one of them guys. Oh, yeah. It was beautiful. It was one of the, it was one of the best interviews I've ever done that I've had the least amount of control over. I loved every minute of it. <laughs> the hell? Fuck it. So yeah, y'all check that out, and uh, we appreciate y'all, right? Yep, yeah, hit up tnhorror.com. Uh, appreciate y'all for listening. If you're a new listener, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully you hey, like it. Hey, if you're listening to iTunes or anywhere, you can leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Yeah. So next week, we're going to be discussing, like, favorite weapons used in a horror movie. Like, you know, cool kills and all that shit, and the weapons that they use. Grindhouse Exploitation Splatter is the second one. And the movie of the week, it all ties in. Hooker with a hacksaw. Oh yeah, who did that movie? Donald. That's Farmer. a Donald Farmer movie, and if you have Prime, you can go watch it for free. There you if go. If you don't have Prime, you can watch it for like two bucks. And if you're into splatter, you're into the old shot on video stuff. I mean, this is all digital, but it's got the heart of a shot on video film. Fucking go check it out. Yeah, man. so go check it out before we talk about it next week. So. uh Appreciate y'all listening. Yeah. Appreciate y'all. That's all we got. We out. Peace. Stay spooky. Try not to be an asshole.